Hello, everyone. Welcome to our webinar this morning, Monday morning. Thanks for being here with us. Uh, Claudia will start in a second. Um, I want to give an intro uh, for Claudia and then also before that remind you that we have uh, these webinars happening every morning this week uh, at 10 a.m. You can check our Facebook page, Greater Therapy Center's Facebook page for the schedule. And then as soon as these uh, each webinar is finished, they are posted up on our YouTube channel. So if you want to go back and review or see some of the ones you might have missed, they're all up there. That's the Greater Therapy Center's YouTube channel. Okay, uh, Claudia attended the University of Arkansas where she received her Bachelor of Science in Kinesiology. She then went on to study at, uh, at UT Southwestern where she earned her Doctorate of Physical Therapy. Her career experiences include six months of neurological experience focusing mostly on stroke and brain injury rehabilitation along with some vestibular rehab. Claudia has also had one year prior of orthopedic experience working with the full range of ages and orthopedic conditions. She has been with our GTC team, GTC team since 2019. In her free time, Claudia loves to travel to new places and cook uh, and explore new foods with her fiance. As a typical PT, exercise is a huge part of her life. She frequently exercises by weightlifting and or yoga. Claudia is an avid reader and loves anything that can get her outdoors, especially running, hiking, camping, and walking her dog, Luna. All right, so I will turn it over to Claudia. I'm going to mute myself, but I'll be here moderating. If you have any questions, you can type in the questions box, and I will do my best to get those to Claudia at the end, and I'll pop back on then. Otherwise, take it away, Claudia. Great. Um, okay, so again, I'm Claudia, um, and we'll talk about what actually boosts your immune system today. Um, I know there's been a lot of information out there that um, may be a little bit confusing to navigate, so we're going to kind of talk about um, what's in the research and give you something that's a little bit easier to understand, hopefully. <clears throat> okay, so um, our objectives for today is, are going to be to understand how the immune system works, um, explain ways exercise, sleep, stress, and um, nutrition affect the immune system, and then learn how to just maximize your immune system support and how to boost it. I have a disclaimer. Um, I'm not a certified nutritionist or registered dietitian, so if you do have any real diet concerns or diseases requiring special diets, um, go to a registered dietitian instead of taking everything I, that I say completely um, true, okay? So there's that. Okay, so number one, what is immunity? So immunity constitutes all the physiological mechanisms which allow the body to recognize material as, as foreign or abnormal and to neutralize them. So basically it's just your protection against pathogens or um, diseases or bugs or bacteria, okay? There are two different types of immunity. So there's not specific, it's what you're born with, and there's specific, which is what you acquire or you adapt towards. So we'll talk about the non specific first. Um, so basically, these are just structures and defense mechanisms. Um, examples are your skin. So, of course, your skin covers your body, it um, protects anything from going inside, um, it's just a physical barrier. Um, things like your GI tract, your respiratory tract, your urinary tract, they have things in place like your stomach is really acidic, so things can't really survive in there. Um, your colon, which we'll talk about later, your gut has a lot of really good bacteria that help fight the bad bacteria. Um, like your urine is really highly acidic, so it helps flush things out. Your respiratory tract has mucous membranes that kind of trap and um, help remove um, bacteria. Natural killer cells destroy cells with viruses or tumors. Mast cells are kind of what uh, help with inflammation, and they also, with histamines, it's kind of the allergy um, part of that. And the main element of your inflammation is a response to any sort of in injury. So basically, your nonspecific causes that infl inflammatory uh, response so that you, if you do have an insult, it'll help start healing it. So your specific um, immunity is basically dependent on exposure to prior um, foreign material. So that's why vaccines work. You obtain the specific immunity is obtained by developing antibodies. Uh, vaccines work by introducing a very small amount of the more foreign bacteria 
or foreign material to your body. And because of that, your body be develops these antibodies. So they're things that kind of, uh, if you want to say they're signal cells to say, hey, we noticed that there's something here. We already have the product to help kind of attach to it and take it away. So that's how that works. Uh, your, there's B cells and T cells. Your B cells are your memory cells and then the, they're the ones that actually produce the antibodies. So those are the ones that remember like, hey, we've actually had this type of invader um, and we remember it and now we're gonna help take it away. And the T cells, there's killer helper and suppressor, re suppressor cells. They're also called regulatory cells. And they kind of give a lot more specialized um, care and maintenance to those um, those bugs. So they can physically pick pick point them or pinpoint them and take them out. Whereas your non-specific innate immunity, those are literally just like a blast. They will, when you have something like strep throat, they're the ones that will just blast it and be like, there's something wrong here. I got to take it all away. And then the, the specific immunity are the ones that will go in and finger point, you know, take them out that way. If that makes sense. All right, signs of your immune system is working. So fever, sore throat, coughing, redness, swelling, um, they're not symptoms of the disease. They're just evidence that your body's working really hard to get rid of the pathogens. The reason that you get a fever is your body naturally increasing its temperature so that pathogens or invaders or bacteria can't survive. Uh, a lot of bacteria are heat resistant. So, um, if your body temperature is elevated, then obviously the bacteria can't survive and that way you um, you get rid of it faster. Sore throat, it's kind of like what I was telling you about earlier where your nonspecific, um, your innate nervous or nervous system, um, immune system kind of goes in and uses the those parts to kind of blast it. So you, basically a sore throat is from your immune system trying to just eat up as much of the cells around the bad cells as possible. So that's why you get a sore throat. So it's not the disease that causes it, it's just the response to the, the disease or the response to the bacteria. Um, so a lot of people, and then coughing too, like your mucous membranes will trap all that. And so it's trying, you're trying to get it out of your system. Uh, redness as well, swelling. Um, so a lot of times we are really scared of all these things, but it actually means that your system, your immune system is working. So they're good. Um, so let's go over the four factors that affect the immune system. So we're gonna talk about exercise, sleep, nutrition, and stress. Um, and I'll go, go over all those in detail right now. So we're gonna start with exercise. So the impact of exercise on immunity. Um, when you first start exercising and do a moderate amount of exercise, your immune system can is better able to find and deal with path pathogens. So it can better tell if there's something wrong and it can better help remove it. Uh, Long-term exercise, so if you're doing it for a long period of time in the sense of over months or years, regular exercise helps slow down changes that happen to your immune system as you age. And so therefore, when you're older and something that might you know, really hurt someone or make someone really sick that's the same age as you, but you've been exercising more than they have, then you might have, you probably will have the better um, chance of kind of dealing with the, um, the sickness or the illness without really big effects. Um, and then there are um, indications that untrained people who start exercising regularly progressively get a stronger immune system and become less susceptible to infections. So that's all to say that exercise is a really important part of life you got to do it it helps boost your immune system um there are some studies just so i can be fully transparent here there are some studies that show that there could be if you do really intense exercise if you're an elite athlete sometimes people think that that could expose you more to immunity because there could be a little bit of a dampening but a lot of you probably aren't elite athletes so you don't have to worry about it so 30 minutes of moderate exercise a day will really help um improve your immune system so let's talk about the importance of sleep. So sleep is basically our reset button for everything. So it protects mental and physical health, quality of life and safety. Um, it's sufficient to stay alert and awake during the day. Uh, it supports healthy brain function and physical health. Basically it's a healing, it's a time that your body gets to heal. So you get a healing process in your heart and blood vessel, 
blood vessels. Um, it balances hormones related to appetite, so you don't overeat as much. You notice people that don't sleep very well can make poor habits um, when they eat, which we'll talk about in a second. But um, it also helps prepare the brain for the next day and improves learning. So it also, because of that, what happens is you need the sleep to make your memory kind of get put in the hard drive. Um, so when you're sleeping, you basically move all of your short-term memory into longer-term memory. So really important for learning and memory. Um, it can help for develop um, protection against um, chronic health problems, so diabetes infections. Um, if you're not sleeping enough, then those can really be exacerbated. And then it's a housekeeping rule for the brain. So while you're sleeping, that's the time for your brain to remove any toxins that it might have in it, um, maintain your neurological pathways, and then, like I said, learn to create your memories. Um, ways to improve your sleep. So I, there's already been a webinar about sleep hygiene and um, Richard, I'm sure, I think is the one that did it. And so it's on, your, our, on our YouTube channel if you want a lot more information on it. But these are just a few ways that you can start improving your sleep. So have a bedtime ritual. If that includes, um, I don't know, doing a face mask or something for you ladies or listening to some calming music or, you know, taking a bath, you could do that. Um, avoiding afternoon naps is important because if you're, taking a long afternoon nap, then you're not as tired at your normal bedtime, and so it's harder to fall asleep. Exercising daily is really important to improve your sleep as well. Um, uh, and then reducing blue light exposure to up to two hours before bed. So every time that you're on your screen, uh, the blue light kind of keeps you stimulated. There Now there are like night modes on computers, and I know all the iPhones have night mode now, so it does reduce that blue light, but if you can, Kind of give yourself a no electronics rule two hours before bed, especially if you have trouble falling asleep. That will kind of help you um, not feel so, it's almost like when you close your eyes and you just can't fall asleep even though you're tired. That sometimes can happen because of the blue light exposure. Reading before bed is really good, especially if you're reading a book or I know the Kindles don't really have blue lights. So if you're reading something, you get a little bit more tired. Um, avoid caffeine, nicotine, alcohol, or heavy metals at night. Um, go to get into bed only when tired and that can be hard but if you're not really sleepy yet but you're just going to bed for the sake of going to bed you'll probably have a hard time falling asleep and another thing too about that is if you do wake up in, in the middle of the night and you can't fall back asleep uh, a lot of sleep doctors say to get up and move around go like read a little bit or something rather than just laying there because then you just get frustrated and it's a never-ending cycle of you're getting anxious because you're not sleeping and so then you can't sleep and just keep cycling like that. And if you really do have a, you know, a severe enough need, speak with a doctor. There are a lot of really good sleep studies out there you could do, um, and they could figure out maybe why you're not sleeping. Because like I said earlier, it's really important to sleep so that your brain can recover and your body can recover and your immune system gets better too. Um, okay, we're gonna get into nut nutrition. This is kind of the bigger part of this whole, um, webinar and it's a lot. So I tried to make it as concise as possible, but it's it, there's a lot out here. So the big thing about nutrition is that it's a lot about gut health. So there's a lot of communication between the gut and the brain. We basically call the gut the second brain and it's because it's got its own nervous system that's completely separate from your central nervous system. Um, and the information that goes from your gut to your brain goes both ways. So you get information going, like your gut tells you what's happening, your brain tells you what's happening, or your gut tells your, your brain what's happening, your brain tells your gut what's happening. And it's regulated neuronally with your endocrine system and your immune system. Um, and I've heard this a, a long time ago and I don't know how true this is, but um, I, I'm pretty sure it's 100% true, don't quote me, but I'm pretty sure there's more neurons that connect your brain to your um, gut than there are connecting your brain to any other part of your body. So it's really important. Um, and I don't think we give our digestive system the love that it deserves, especially since 75 to 80% of the immune system is in the gut. And that makes sense because a lot of what we eat, that's how we absorb our nutrients. That's how we are able to flush out toxins. So if you're not giving your nutrition a second thought, basically everything else you do is almost a moot point. Um, that's, you know, that's just what it is. So if you ever heard of a leaky gut, um, this happens a lot with inflammation. So this, th 
this is the reason that a lot of people do elimination diets or something like that, just to see if they are sensitive to anything or allergic to anything. Because if you are eating something that your body isn't necessarily able to process well, basically what happens is that your intestinal lining becomes inflamed and more permeable. So it's leaky. So things can, the wall in your intestines can have little maybe perforations or it's not able to contain things as well. And so that basically just allows your food and toxins to flow directly into the bloodstream. I'm not saying like you have a straight up like slice in there, everything's flowing out because that would be a medical emergency, but just little molecules are able to kind of travel between the gut and the, um, the bloodstream. And so that can allow also toxins to go straight into your blood. And that basically, as those toxins flow in, into your blood, we're going to go back into that, the immune system components that notice that there's toxins. And so then you get an inflammatory response and that can either be right there, or if it's going through your bloodstream, then it's become systemic. So it's going through your whole body. Um, and then that also increases this and it becomes this vicious cycle of your intestines are more leaky and then it allows more toxins. And then you get more inflammation and stuff like that. So um, keeping a really good, healthy diet is really important, especially one that is um, appropriate for you because everyone is a little bit different and what they can tolerate food wise is a little bit different. So I'm going to talk about free radicals and antioxidants because we hear about antioxidants a lot and how you have to make sure you're getting all of them. Um, and basically the reason for antioxidants is so that you can kind of get rid of free radicals. And free radicals are highly unstable mo molecules that are either nat naturally formed in your body or you can get them from the environment. So um, cigarette smoke or air pollution or... Um, whatever else is in the environment, things that you're not eating appropriately, you could get more free radicals. You also um, produce free radicals when you exercise, but the good and bad thing about this is free, free radicals can cause oxidative stress, which can trigger cell damage, but they also help our immune system fight diseases because they can grab some of those um, toxins and expel them basically um so there is a really fine line with the free radicals antioxidants catch and clear the free radicals from our system but the big but here is that you have to have a balance between the two for optimum health so a lot of people think that free radicals are really bad but they really aren't um it's just when you have too many free radicals or not enough free radicals it's like a seesaw between the antioxidants and the um free radicals so if you have too much of this, it's not good. If you have too much of this, it's not good. So just keep the balance. Um, and then we'll talk about vitamins and then we'll go back to the antioxidants a little bit. So the reason I start wanting to talk about vitamins is because we talk a lot about of them. We talk about a lot of them as antioxidants, especially vitamin C, but I wanted to go through each of these and discuss them as well, because sometimes you just hear, make sure you get your vitamins, but you don't really know what they do with what they're there for. So it's important to kind of understand why you're doing something because then maybe that'll make you do it more. And I put in here where you can get the vitamins more naturally, just so you have a little bit um, of extra, especially if you're looking back at this, it's gonna be an easy um, reference to you and source. So vitamin A, you get a lot of, it also falls into the beta carotene, falls under vitamin A, which is really important for bone growth, immune system, tissue and skin health. And it is an antioxidant, so it does help remove some of those um, um, those free radicals, I guess. So you can get them from carrots, sweet potatoes, spinach. Um, it, there's charts online that you can even look at and it says what kind of foods have what vitamins. So if you do want to be more um, aware of what you're eating, then that's a really easy way to do it. Vitamin B, so there's multiple different versions of vitamin B. There's like B1, B2, B3, B6, B9, B12, and they all do a little bit of different things. B1, 2, and 3 are mostly right in here. The hair, skin, nails, blood, brain, uh, they protect that. Your six and 12 are the ones that we don't get as much from our diet. These we mostly get, that's like they're, your full of, or your like niacin, all those um, things that you've heard of. Those are the one, two, and three. Your B, uh, six and 12 are heart protective and help make red blood cells. Those we don't get as much of. Um, and then B9, helps promote nerve function as well. I think that one's folic acid. So there's those, you can get them from sea, seafood, meat, eggs. I'm pretty sure also dark leafy greens, um, you can get them from a bunch of different sources. 
Vitamin C is our biggie. Um, it helps aid in production of white blood cells and white blood cells are the ones that are the disease fighters. Um, it also improves your body's iron absorption. Oh, and I should say B, vitamin B also helps against protect against anemia. Um, so vitamin C is basically your citrus, your bell peppers, dark leafy greens. Um, this is a, a really good immune system booster. We always talk about getting more vitamin C. Vitamin D, a lot of people are really deficient in vitamin D. And I think it's because of our lack of going outside and using sunscreen. So vitamin D is important because it main, helps maintain normal levels of calcium, normal levels of calcium and phosphorus, which helps strengthen teeth and bones. Basically, without vitamin D, you wouldn't be able to absorb your calcium and phosphorus. Um, so a really easy way to get vitamin D is to go out in the sun without sunscreen for like 20 minutes. If you start seeing a little bit of pink on your skin, that's when it's time to go inside, especially if you're more fair skinned. But there's a really big, it's a double edged sword. Sunscreen is because you know you want to protect your skin and you want to. Um, not get skin cancer and get all the UV ray damage, but it's like the easiest way to get vitamin D is just through sunlight. So if you just go out there for a little bit without sunscreen on, that's how you can get it pretty easily. And then you don't have to get it from milk or shiitake mushrooms. So that should be enough. Um, but there are a lot of other ways you can get it from food. So vitamin E protects your vitamin A and your vitamin K and it protects cells from damage. And you can get that from nut seeds and asparagus. Again, that's, these are not all encompassing lists. They're just easy to find foods, I think. Um, and then vitamin K is critical for blood, your body's clotting factors. And I know blood clots sound really scary, but they're the good blood clots. The sense in the sense of if you get a cut, they're the they're the clotting factors that help you from basically bleeding out from a paper cut. They're the ones that go in and close that up so you don't keep bleeding. So it's really important to get your vitamin K. Uh, dark leafy greens and parsley are really good sources of that. I will say vitamin B and C are water soluble, which basically means that you're just going to excrete them in your urine if you have too much. Vitamin A, D, E, and K are all fat soluble, which basically means any excess is going to be stored in fat. So you don't want to overdo these at all. Make sure you're getting enough. Um, but they can you could overdose on them um it'd be hard to do you'd have to take a ton of extra supplements that you wouldn't do it through food but just wanted to make you aware of that um that's why you can see too sometimes when you see a vitamin c pill or a vitamin b pill it'll say like a thousand percent of your daily recommended intake so that's what that means um next so with the immune system boosting diet so eat vitamin rich foods and supplement those you can't. So if you like really hate green vegetables or something, like really just can't stomach it, there are pills you can take that have them. Um, uh, I know there's a company called Juice Plus that ha that basically takes fruits and vegetables and gets all the nutrients and crumbles them up into these little pills. So it's just fruit and vegetables and pills um, that you can get. Obviously talk to your doctor about any supplements you want to take, but there's also like green green powders that you can drink um, if you really are having a hard time getting your vitamin C. If you know you're allergic to citrus or something, try to find something else that you can do. Um, antioxidants from your foods: um, blueberry, kale, and yes, dark chocolate is a really big antioxidant. So you're welcome for that. Um, I will say for antioxidants, speaking earlier for keeping that balance. Taking regular high dose antioxidant supplements, so not eating them, but taking, you know, a pill or there's sometimes there's like antioxidant powders, they could be really harmful to you. So I would not personally take antioxidants in a supplement. I would eat blueberries, eat your kale, eat dark chocolate, um, find other foods. Acai is a big one, elderberry. Um, those are foods that can help you get it naturally and without the kind of harmful effects of um, synthetic antioxidants that are made in a lab, basically. Um, probiotics are really important for your gut health. So speaking earlier, how you in your gut, that's a big part of where you get your nutrients and stuff. You have a bunch of really good bacteria there. So those bacteria help eliminate bad bacteria. You're, it's necessary there to keep a really good environment and um, keep your gut from being leaky. So take probiotics. You don't have to take a pill if you don't want to. You can get it from yogurt, 
kimchi is like a um an asian cabbage that's been fermented kombucha is fermented tea and sauerkraut is fermented cabbage as well so yogurt also is fermented if you didn't know that but anything that's fermented usually has a really good amount of probiotics you can also find um you know at the store you can find probiotics that have you know it says billions of cells or billions of um cultures and those are good for you as well they're also really good to take when you're taking antibiotics because antibiotics are antibacterials right so if you're taking a lot of antibiotics it's they're usually not specific enough to not also harm the flora or the good gut bacteria that you have so if you supplement with a probiotic they'll it'll kind of help you from getting um you know less good gut health and talk to your doctor about that as well if you do get prescribed a antibiotic ask if they have any probiotics that they would recommend for you to take at, at the same time eating omega-3s is really important for your gut health as well you can get them from flax or chia seeds walnuts or salmon our american diet tends to have a lot more omega-6s than omega-3s um we don't have as we don't eat as much omega-3s and omega-3s are the anti-inflammatory omega-6s can be pro-inflammatory so take a few more omega-3s there's fish oil pills if you want i know this one can make you burp but if you don't like any of this stuff you could take it in a um a supplement as well um and then fibers are really big ones so fiber binds to harmful chem chemicals and metals and helps eliminate them in your gut and insoluble fiber is one of the only natural ways to lower your cholesterol so insoluble fiber things like um brown rice and whole grains and stuff like that um those are really important so make sure you're getting enough fiber uh it's good gut health also helps with that gut brain access uh access and the your second brain um in your stomach and when in doubt what i have here is eat the rainbow so as you can see here you know those peppers apples tomatoes and oranges and pineapple and all the greens and blueberries so if you can think to eat, you know, an, a red, orange, yellow, green, blue fruit or vegetable every single day, then you're already on your way because all of these have different amounts of vitamins and different um, minerals that you may need that maybe if you only eat all greens that you're kind of missing out on the good beta carotene that the orange um, and yellow and red fruit have and vegetables have. So eat the rainbow um, and it kind of makes it more fun and your plate's more colorful and it makes eating more enjoyable. So um there's immune boost immune boosting diet okay next power of water uh we like to say that the solution to pollution is dilute dilution so water is a basic nutrient meaning it's something that we can't live without um it does normalize your blood pressure it maintains electrolyte balance aids digestion and helps your heart rate keep your heart rate normal um i will say i do have patients sometimes that will come in and they they're like well my blood pressure is really low or my heart rate's lower than normal. And I'm like, well, have you drank water? And they said, well, I drank my 20 ounce soda this morning. And like I said right here, while all beverages pretty much contain water and they do contribute to your daily needs, water is the best because it, when you have the soda and your coffee and stuff, all that, it still has a bunch of junk in it. It's not just natural water. And water is the best way to kind of clear things out. It's it's the way, you know, if you excrete it and it can dilute everything, all your toxins. Uh, and a recommended intake of water is eight, eight ounce glasses. And that can be a lot for people. So start small, but make sure you're drinking water. Um, and I will say one thing that caffeine is slightly dehydrating. I mean, you will, it will make you, it's, it's a diuretic. It will make you go to the bathroom. But if you really love tea and that's the only way you're going to drink water as long as it's maybe not sweet then it's better than nothing but i will say try drinking water um you could put like lemon juice or the flavor bottles that are coming out now and they're just as good as regular water so find a way to drink water especially as summer's coming because we do get dehydrated and when you feel thirsty that's usually not a sign that you are like oh wow i just need some water it usually is a sign that you're already getting dehydrated and that you are dehydrated a little bit so thirst is not a sign of your body wanting water it's a sign of it needing water fyi and also don't you want your organs to be like this when you do drink water so you're going to be so proud um okay last thing is going to be stress so um 
The big thing about stress is it also leads to a vicious cycle that just causes um, your body to not function as properly as it should. So our natural response to acute stress, so if you are, this is more from prehistoric eras or caveman eras, I guess, it helps the fight or flight mechanism. So when you're, or even now when you're driving and someone cuts you off or something, you, your heart rate goes up, like you get higher blood pressure, um, you're basically you shunt all your blood away from your organs and it goes to your skeletal muscles so you can fight or flight you can run longer or you can you have the energy and the wherewithal to fight right so cortisol is a big thing that gets re released for that um, if you've heard of corticosteroids those are synthetic ways um, that are their pills um, that can be medicine and cortisol is a steroid it's a hormone that gets released from right above your kidney and it has anti-inflammatory effects, but it also suppresses your immune system. So if you've heard a lot about, or about people that take steroids for a long period of time, even though it helps them fight, fight infections, their immune system just gets completely shut off after just using um, steroids. And a lot of people with transplants take steroids to basically shut their immune system off so they don't reject the organ, right? Because your immune system finds the foreign body and tries to fight it. So steroids, aka cortisol, can help uh, or can cause that to happen. So if you've got a ton of stress, you can lead to inflammation, which will lead to body or damage in your body. And then it will just keep going and going and going. Um, it can cause, you know, your constant heightened high blood pressure can cause your high, high blood pressure and it can cause heart issues. And um, a lot of times too, people that are stressed don't sleep well, they eat poorly, they use things like drugs and alcohol to help cope with it. and that all like it's just like this big nice package of just like body failing right so if we can figure out ways to be less stressed and i know it's really hard right now especially if people that have you know lost their jobs and have no idea what's going to come next and it is scary because it's a fear of the unknown um it can cause us to not be able to fight any pathogens as well if you do happen to get sick and if you do happen to even get a common cold that can have a more detrimental effect if you are more stressed and more chronically stressed than if you are not. So I know that there also has been a webinar about how to manage stress. Um, I would go listen to that too, especially if you're struggling with that. Uh, we're gonna go over a few ways that you can manage your stress before we end um, right now. So big things on lowering stress. If you really are so stressed that you are getting anxiety or some sort of depression, or you're just feeling hopeless, um, talk to someone or seek professional help. A lot of times we just need to get our feelings and thoughts out. And that could be almost like, uh, just open the floodgates, let all, let it all out. And you might feel better after, uh, a lot of times we're kind of scared to ask for help. So it's not a sign of weakness. It's definitely a sign of strength if you do do that. So, um, if you are feeling a little bit, you know, sad or really stressed out, talk to someone. Spending time outside is really good something about the weather and the vitamin d that you can get from the sun really helps um and it kind of makes you feel like you're not all alone if you're if you're stuck inside and, and you only see four walls forever then you just you know you can get inside your head but go outside spend some time outside get moving get some exercise in um even walking 30 minutes will help release endorphins which are your feel-good hormones they'll make you feel a little bit better and it does prolonged exercise does help decrease your blood pressure and heart rate overall and help your heart. So at least if you're stressed, mitigate it by exercising. Um, you can meditate and practice positive thinking. There are a lot of apps out there. Um, I know Danny, when she did the, um, the stress one, she talked about Headspace. Um, there are mantra websites that you can look at that kind of help you figure out how to think positively through things. Take a few minutes to just breathe. You can do two breaths or two counts of breaths in, two counts of breaths out, just slowly, eyes closed. Um, that can help decrease any high blood pressure or um, high heart rate that you may have. Increase your meaningful social interaction. This is a doozy for now, obviously, because we basically could just interact through a webcam or a phone, but our social, we are very social creatures. So if you, are really isolating yourself, that can take a big toll on yourself too. Um, so if, call a friend if you really need someone to talk to. Try essential oils, especially lavender has um, anti or stress relief effects. Um, 
there's lavender sprays you can put on your pillow before you go to bed and they're calming. So try that. I love using lavender. I think it's great. Listen to music. Um, a lot of times music can kind of take you away um, from the current moment. So listen to music that you really like, calling music, really upbeat music, whatever. And lastly, take some time to yourself. So if you feel really bogged down, like you're, I know a lot of people that are working from home are actually working a lot more than they would be if they were working outside of home. So give yourself some boundaries, give yourself um, an hour a day just to do whatever you want to do. And that could be, you know, coloring or just watching something that you want to watch or something, you know, read, do something that makes you happy um, and stop saying yes to everything because that will bog you down as well. So there's some ways to lower stress and to boost your immune system. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to contact me. I know that was a lot. Uh, the immune system can be kind of tricky and the whole body is all encompassing. Um, it basically just all works together. If one thing's off, then everything else will be off or it's just a balance, balancing act constantly. So if you do have any questions or if I didn't make something very clear, please contact me. That's my email right there. Um, and I think that ends it for right now. So thank you for listening. Thanks, Claudia. Um, we appreciate you guys listening today. And, um, you know, this is a big topic to cover. So thanks for trying to tackle it, Claudia. We appreciate all of that information. Yeah. Um, like I said, it'll be up on our YouTube channel here in about an hour or so once it's processed. Uh, be sure and check our Facebook page for the schedule for all of our webinars that are coming up. And don't forget, we do have telehealth uh, services available at our clinics. If you're still not comfortable coming in, we can see patients face-to-face, uh, -face, but obviously we're taking all of the needed precautions at this point. Um, so if you'd rather have a, a consult or, or a visit uh, via telehealth, we can certainly set that up for you. You can do that through any of our clinics. Just give us a call. Thanks a lot and have a good day.